I am a big fan of chargers in this form factor. Today I'm gonna do a power output test using these two MacBook Pros. The battery on both laptops has been drained to be under 20% and 50% respectively and show you what it's capable of. It is rated at 120 watts and it is one of the most powerful one I have ever tested so far. It features two USB Type-C ports and two USB Type-A ports. These are rated 100 watts maximum each and the total will not exceed 120 watts. It has a five feet long user replaceable power cord and I can route it through my desk and use it like this. I think that is a good length, great for travel or just general office use. This is my current setup for this test. There is a power meter connected to this 120 watts charger, which is not drawing any noticeable electricity when it's idling. There is a green LED right there, so we know it's on. And now I'm gonna plug in the MacBook Pro 16 inch on my right hand side. And on, on the left, that's, Mac, that's the MacBook Pro 13 inch. And now I'm getting 95.6 and 0 0.8 watts. That's only 4.3 3 watts less than the rated 100 watts maximum output from that one single USB-C cable. And just to show you, these two USB-C cables are actually identical. I plugged in to the other port, I think I'm gonna get the same uh, power output. So it does not matter which one you plug in. Again, I'm getting 95 watts and the state of charge of this MacBook Pro is around 50%. And this one is sitting at 15%. Uh, now I'm gonna connect the second laptop. And now the power will uh, reset getting redistributed across these two devices and I'm getting 108 watts, 110. So that's really close to the uh, specified uh, power output. Uh, but I'm just curious which one gets the most power. So that's where this Clan Tools USB-C um, power meter comes in. That's 113 watts right now. Okay, I'm gonna put this thing, this thing in the middle between the charger and the MacBook Pro. And let's see, again, it will reconnect. Looks like every time I disconnect, it kind of reset the both um, power output. And I have to wait for a second before it reaches the peak output. So here I'm getting 19 volts. 3.14 amps, that's about 60 watts of power output from this charger to the MacBook Pro, and uh, which means this laptop is getting about 50, um, 55 watts, and this one is getting 60 watts. That's a great result. Now let's plug in more devices, for example, a Bluetooth speaker and an iPhone. And looks like it's maxing out its power uh, output at 119 watts. That's only one watt be below its weighted power consumption. That, now that's 124 watts, 25. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, currently it's charging my MacBook Pro, two MacBook Pros, uh, Bluetooth speaker, and my um, iPhone. So that is a lot going on. And now the power output dropped a little bit. I think it is, again, redistributing power among these devices. It's really gonna be uh, tough to track how much power goes into which device. But the, according to the manufacturer's specification, the 
maximum uh, 18 watts is the output from the USB A ports. Now, if you have the U, uh, if you have the iPhone, if your main uh, objective is to charge the iPhone, I would recommend getting the USB C to lightning cable to maximize its power output. For example, I'm gonna remove the MacBook 13 inch from the picture and plug in the USB-C to lightning cord just to charge the iPhone and remove the USB-A to lightning cord. And that will give you the maximum 18 watts of charging speed to the iPhone if your if your iPhone user or um, iPad user use the USB-C you, um, with the power delivery port is going to give you the best results. Again, according to the Clan Tools USB meter, the MacBook Pro 16 inch is drawing about 60 watts uh, pretty consistently. 85 watts total output without the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Yeah, so. It gets warmer a little bit, but never hot. So that is the um, good thing about the GAN tech, the gallium nitride technology. It is very compact with great heat dissipation. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.